and rely with Farah to ask her for inquiries because as you'll find out folks they are not quite questions they're not sort of phrased as questions so the first inquiry is uh so uh, Farah, please tell us about your um education career sort of like from the beginning um well <clears throat> I, uh, I started reading my mom's medical books when I was three and I found them highly interesting. And um, I, even if I couldn't actually read them, read them, I wanted to pretend like I could read them. And uh, cause I like to make the impression on my parents. And um, I did well academically also because of wanting to please my parents and uh, make an impact on my teachers and be like the best student. Um, but my interest is always geared towards like biological type of uh, sciences. Um, I did okay in math up until we got to the more abstract, like, uh, al algebra, uh, aspect. Um, and then it was kind of a struggle. So I had to work on that part in order to complete my degree in something that was medical related because it usually stated, uh, computers were a thing. And so, um, I went to a computer school for a little bit, uh, did some electrical engineering or whatever, electronic engineering. And I just did that, like one trimester and um, I did really horrible at it, uh, learning about digital and or gates and the logic behind all that. It was like, I got my first F I'd ever gotten in a class ever. And uh, it was like, it was pretty mortifying. Um, and uh, my grandpa was dying, I was taking care of him. But even then, like I got an A in psychology. So I felt like I had no excuse for getting an F. Um, so I reevaluated. Um, what I wanted to do, uh, and I, I went to Columbus State, which is a, a little technical college around here, and um, I just took a bunch of classes just to see which ones I like better. Uh, there was like PC hardware. Um, I took, um, I don't know, philosophy once, which made my head hurt, and then I took uh, um, anthropology. Oh. I love that a lot. What's that? I, I, I just give you a little follow up there because there's that a couple of things you mentioned what drew you towards biology and what didn't you like or what did you or what were your thoughts on when you did the philosophy class uh, well with biology I, I like that it's alive um there's something organic about it um and i'm not totally sure but it just i love animals i always loved animals anything living so biology is the science of living things and it's basically that's that's what i love i don't like cold hard uh like technology was removed from the human experience and the living component so i really didn't quite feel like i would be making a difference or an impact on anything um and I couldn't feel like I was actually helping people. Like it's almost kind of too abstract and removed from the living component to feel like I was making that big of a difference. Um, and I've always wanted to be a doctor. Uh, like I said, I was like dissecting uh, animals that my uncle would bring home from medical college. And um, I would help him like hold the hemostats and we'd do stitches together. And so I just, I loved everything about the body and medical and everything. Do you think part of the reason you wanted to be? Oh, this is I'm doing this thing again where I said I wouldn't lead you, but it's like, but it's sort of like because you did mention this thing about your mother. Is like, do you think like because certain relatives had been in the field of medicine that that maybe drew you to it? I don't know if it's. Uh, I never really totally identify with my mother, so I felt like she was different than me. We had very different interests. She was in nursing, and I liked more like learning it was more of a caring for people component to her that i couldn't do i was too sensitive to the suffering of other people to get directly involved with people so i didn't really want to be involved in their direct care i don't really want to care for people i want to figure them out and help them uh get better or diagnose it because that was a lot of fun i liked um i liked figuring it out i i think i um what was it there was a, there's inductive and ad, uh, adductive learning or ad um, oh, For those that don't know what that is, including me, please tell us what that is. <laughs> oh, um, it's like where you can take 
pieces of, of reality and then come up with the most like with offshoots, but not a whole lot. And it's it's kind of like what Sherlock Holmes does um, with his learn his style of thinking. Um, there's it's like almost like I think a branch of inductive learn inductive thinking, uh, but it's called well, abductive. See, well, yeah. you see, Jonathan should have joined. He, he liked Sherlock Holmes. He could have maybe said something about that, but yeah. you know, yeah. he missed the hangout. Maybe he'll watch it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I used to love Sherlock Holmes when I was a kid too. Um, but yeah, so um, it was a fun challenge and I, I loved, you know, doing well. It was a good fit for me. I got really good grades in, in that particular uh, area. So I took some classes with my mom when she was finishing her nursing degree when I was in college and I took a microbiology class, nursing degree when I was in college and I took a microbiology class, laboratory um, technology here at the college. So I looked into it and there was a two year degree program uh, where you become a lab tech and you can perform lab tests, um, looking in a microscope and looking at people's cells, um, you know, that kind of thing. Was, so. there, was there an approach of trying different things to find out what you were good at and picking the subject that you were good at rather than the subject that you found more interest on? No, I wanted to, it was like one and the same. I was more interested and I, it felt like um, I liked it a lot. So I'm not gonna do something that I don't like. Is right. it just, is it, there's no motivation there. Um, and I, I'm sure that's probably true for most people, I would imagine. And um, so I liked it and I did well with it. So it was a good fit. And I went and I became, I went through the program, I did, did it really well, and I, I worked as a lab tech for probably about 10 years off and on, um, uh, only stopping momentarily to work with my father um, for his, he had a business and I thought it would help me be able to be home with my son longer when he was a baby. And I got divorced and realized that in order to keep my kids in the quality of life that I had had for them when I was married. I wanted to get my bachelor's degree in medical laboratory science so that I could get a, a pay raise and also have better opportunities to get different types of jobs if I wanted to. Uh, so before I got divorced, I enrolled in a program that was online learning to complete my bachelor's degree. And um, in about two and a half years, I, I finished doing that but it was almost like full-time work, full-time uh, college and um, uh, you know, being a single parent at the time. But I did finish that and then became them. And I thought with, with um, well, at first I liked computing because of the social aspect and um, I love video games. And it was a lot of fun to explore i love exploring a new computer like say when somebody gets a new gadget i love exploring it and learning how it functions like what you can do with it i like to see all it can do um and figure out how to use it so i i don't know i'm kind of i'm decent with technology generally like i can usually figure it out um and so like for my family i'm like the person that helps them with their their stuff, you know, I could troubleshoot pretty good. So I thought, um, I don't know, I just thought it would be a good challenge to have those, that fun troubleshooting. And um, I don't know, I, it, it just, it's not quite what I thought it would be. Right, so you're the person I'll, I'll hook people up if they have a problem getting into a hangout, especially an INFJ, I will say, <laughs> how <laughs> is your person? Yeah, I mean, like in. with Ash, like, you know, with her computer issues, I wish I lived closer and I could just like come over and help her because I would totally do that. <laughs> I like it. So it's fun. I mean, it's, it's frustrating. What I can ask you is like, because you're a type aware person and you can remember the approach that, um, and when you're in that environment of being a med tech, there's probably going to be quite a few like <clears throat> intuitive people there and did you and I think maybe you spoke to Jack Aaron about this and you're like was there a did you notice a difference in approach between yourself 
and maybe the people who you thought were a bit more intuitive and abstract? Uh, there was actually not as much of a difference with that as much as there was the TE difference. I noticed there's a lot of TJs in the lab and these TJs were amazing at knowing what to do. Um, like that is the laboratory right there. That's like, they're, they're just like, that's their niche, you know, they're perfect for right. it. Um, and so I worked with, um, I did go to, when I went to school with the, um, a lot of various types, uh, the NTJs were usually the ones that I was in competition with secretly. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> like, um, they, cause they're really smart. They blew me away. And I was, I was good working with them because they could just tell me what's on. Um, and I was good at troubleshooting. So in the immediate present situation, quite good at handling processes um, and being very organized. And um, yeah, they were very, very organized, but that I was completely the opposite. I was very odd in the, in the laboratory because I was more spontaneous and uh, I didn't follow all the rules. <laughs> so. Could you give examples of that, please? Because this is like a very important distinction for like, say, between say like SLI and LSI. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so like the STJs would put like rules in place, like you have to do this and then you have to do this and then you have to do this and then you have to do this. But if, if in the situation it doesn't make sense to do it, it was a, I mean, it was just like, I understand the reasoning behind why that rule was put in place. And if that reasoning isn't correct in this situation, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but I mean, I, this is, I've, this has happened all throughout my life where like people make silly rules and it just doesn't make sense to, uh, to necessarily follow them because it's nothing's black and white to me really. So <laughs> and you, you sort of get this in where you think of the, I think of telling these people maybe you should be able to think on your feet. <laughs> well, I don't know. I never, I don't com confront anybody generally, but if they start to tell me what to do, then I start getting very upset because I feel like right. I know what I'm doing and my reasoning is pretty, usually for the most part, my reasoning is pretty good, especially in the laboratory where I know my stuff. Yeah. Um, so uh, when people would, question me or it looks like they're judging me um and and caught me doing things that weren't right that upset me a lot right what we're going to do folks is we're going to have a separate hangout with Farah where we go through um some more of a enneagram stuff so this will go quite well together with this one and we'll look more towards those but this one we're going to concentrate on sort of like victor's four inquires and, and then it's like less stuff for her to type up mm -hmm. <laughs> okay victor and then um so um uh, yeah i think that's enough because I, I, I want to pretty much stick to victor's uh questions uh uh with that i've asked you about the that's no, and you've, you've explained that there about so oh yes so just in general though in your in your life um there's, there's like two views where um and, and you're a type knowledgeable person so like you have like the the mbti sps are described as like improvisers and like you've got the sjs are about following procedure yeah w which when you've looked at those like descript which one do you relate to more I completely relate to the artisan much more so than uh, the SJs. Right. The SJs kind of got on my nerves because of the following procedures thing. Um, there's a lot of nice SJs. I mean, not not to say that their way is wrong. It's just different. Just just to say, Victor is like going to be reading this, and like other people. But which parts of like the artisan description did you agree with, and which parts were not were not you? Um, well, uh, wait, was this Dario Nardi's description or Linda Barron's like that book? Cause the, are we going by that temperament? Yeah, let's go by that because yeah, if we pretty much go, because it's all pretty much the same because like 
Linda Barron's like will credit David Kersey as her mentor. Oh, okay. And then uh, Linda Barron's had a big influence on Dario Nardi because they've worked together for 20 years. So I sort oh, of okay. like go through those three sure. together. And, and also we know Jeff who's influenced <clears throat> by Kersey. Yeah, actually Kersey was what's got me into all this. So, but um, yeah, I think the clearest description for me was when Linda Barron's in that book that she had in that circle, uh, the very, target of that circle is freedom. And that is so crucial to me. And before I learned about typology, I realized how much I, I need freedom, but I didn't realize it until I didn't have it. And I didn't realize how important that was to me. And so I even had that conversation in my head before I knew anything about uh, typology. Um, so there's that, there's the need for impact I have. I have a huge need for impact. And I want to see it on people's faces. I want it to be immediate. Um, I love performing and uh, if I can do it right and please people, make them laugh uh, or do a good job, that kind of thing, I want to see it. So that's all I can remember right now. I can't remember anything else. No. But what, what I, what, I mean, to me, I mean, initially this might seem at odds with, I mean, the, um, do you think, you, which type do you, might, do you think you might be in Enneagram? Uh, I think I'm more nine than six. All right. All right, okay. Um, but, uh, I just went to the Enneagram panel yesterday and the lady that typed me there, she types me as a six and she still says she, when she saw me in person, she thinks that I'm more the six. Um, but I don't know if that fear is really as much of a guiding force to me, uh, as it is that I have like that self-worth problem. Yes. That that's the thing. Half. Yeah. I think so, people are like going off that that one thing it's like they're just going off that trait of it's a like a non-type factor that sort of like gets in the way yeah and people will label that as six yeah so i don't know i mean i am i do have social anxiety so i don't know if that comes off mm -hmm. also looking six six ish but i am self pressed too so I, I don't want to do anything that was going to like kill me right <laughs> from, from what i've learned about six it's like they are it's not just the um it's like they they want to be um they have that group mentality towards them as well but that can vary by their subtype and yeah. uh and like yeah so the self-present the social sixes they do have that guardian aspect to them although i do agree with jonathan any type can be a six or appear like a six because any type can be insecure and yeah, I agree. Yeah. And anxiety is not in just the realm of six. Everybody yeah. has these human emotions and yeah. uh, some of them for more, even it might even be biological reasons. Who knows? You know, yeah. some people yeah. might be neurologically wired differently. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's just, just the hormones involved in fear. You put a different chemical in someone that can fear, can, they can feel completely different. Exactly. Um, yeah. So th that was interesting there about, so in which ways do you like to make an impact? Um, I don't know if it's like the two part of me, but, uh, I like to help people. So if it's, um, if I can see I made a positive impact, uh, I mean, I guess some SPs might just want to impact in general, but I, I definitely want to, um, I want to do something good for somebody. And, um, I also like it when, and this is kind of maybe a little narcissistic, but I like it when I do good and, it, people can see that and they're like in recognition of my performance. I like to see that my performance had an impact on them in some way uh, hmm. too. Right there. Is that a bad hmm or? <laughs> no, 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 that's all good. It's just, just, just you are very, you're very, as we know, as we, as we learned from your Dario Nardi results, you are a complex person, Farah. You're some, you're some kind of SP in my opinion, but. Uh, yeah, I, I think, think I'm an ISF. I'm so go ahead. Victor might lean towards S SLI, and which is a little. I mean, the SLI is a little bit like the Kersey ISTP. Like, so for example, the SLI is even called like the master, like the craftsman. That's good. You're the master. You're like the the skilled like expert. <laughs> yeah. and, and it has this thing, and it talks about. Um, and with the SLI, like it will talk about with the creative TI. For them, it's like flexibly switching between different systems and 
and then the the with the LSI one, which is a bit more like Kersey ISTJ, mm -hmm. that's more about rigidly following the rules and yeah. a structure of things. That's what I picked up too. Yeah. Yeah. But see, I, I I was typed recently by somebody too. Uh, I, I was typed recently by somebody too. And I, yeah, I've, always, I've always felt like I related to FI and TI. And I thought maybe because, you know, when you're young, your brain is, that was quick. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not quite that quick. So <laughs> that's yeah. good. That was a good joke by Jeff. Yeah. Um, um, right, so the next inquiry will be, um, so far, please tell us about your hobbies and interests. Um, they change. Um, Sometimes it's cyclical where I revisit something and I extract further information from it. It's generally topics that I deep dive into and I want to learn all about it. And like, say, for instance, the nutrition, I, um, the books that I read probably equal amount to about over $200 because I just like was like consuming everything. I just wanted um, medical, nutrition, animals, uh, exercise physiology, um, typology, neuroscience, not, not as much into that. That starts getting a little too technical and hard for me, I think. Dario's book. I think the temperament one. I'm surprised he didn't like, I know. <laughs> he I, has I, done that in videos where he's said, where he's talked about a book and then he's gone 10 books each. You know what though? I, I saw that he had a rack in in this office. Um, yes. I wanted to buy all of them, um, but my, my friend, ah, I didn't right, want to look right. like I was being too crazy. But um, right, okay. yeah, if I was just there by myself with him, I probably would have. <laughs> but he did sign my book, so I thought the lazier side of things. Conserve, I conserve my energy. Um, right. really, I have to be mentally, like I have to, I have to feel. I know I feel like I'm very NTP-ish in that in that respect. Like I've always identified with the women on the INTP boards uh, because you know they always talk about oh, I didn't shower for five days and you know, like, <laughs> like, well, I'm right there with you, sister. <laughs> well, it, it depends where you live. I mean, you live in a colder place, so it, it's more forgivable. You know, I, no don't Ohio. make excuses for me. Don't make any. Ex <laughs> I'm just. It's bad. I'm just a bad person. <laughs> Right. Um, it's because I mean, as you're thinking, I'm thinking about I, I do that like INTP thing where I'm thinking about like in one system of curves, then I'm thinking about then I'm switching it to socionics. And when it's the introverted sensing, the sensing introverts in socionics mm -hmm. have to like switch it around because I the see. way things know, are designed differently, it is a little bit tricky. Um, uh, what, I, what I actually I think is. Uh, I'll actually mention something that I think is relevant. I don't know. Have you talked all about your hobbies and interests? And then I can, I could talk a little bit about a theory about of mine. It's about any &E and SI, and then I can see how you relate to it. Sure. Yeah. Look, uh, I do have one more thing to say, I guess. Yeah, um, go on. My interests are also, I don't come up with like a whole lot of ideas, but I'm just like, oh, this would be good to do that with. Got a little bit of a theory from um, NLP. And it's it's a way of like redefining the functions a little bit. And I've talked about this in a in a, a previous, and that is the idea of, and and it will fit. It fits in with the way Dario defines any, where he defines it as transcontextual thinking, mm -hmm. and so it's when you've when you're sort of like finding the connections between. A and B, a judo program. And the judo instructor said, the key is to use your opponent's weight against himself. And so if I were to give you that little, it's almost like a rule, a little like, what, what would you be able to do with that? If you heard something like that, use your opponent's weight against himself is the like could you apply that to a different situational context 
I've always struggled with that kind of transcontextual thinking, to be honest with you. I've always known that was a limitation of mine. Um, Cause when people could come up with words and a bunch of ideas of what those words could be, I'm like two words and that's it. I can't think of anything more. Right. So, um, I mean, something happened. It, I was like homeschooling the kids and uh, it was like, I told, I don't know if I told you about this, but it was like, I had a, a I was growing the, the community. Yeah, I mean, it's a very close person <laughs> yeah i don't think mine's like that it's very close to and then i'll uh it's like it's like the way carl jung describes it, it's like so it's like ni types have like their ear to the wall of history so in touch with the archetypes in their uncon in their unconscious and they're like heavily influenced by the collective unconscious and the archetypes represent like all human knowledge and stuff so it's like they're in touch with these universals and it's like because they're in touch with these universals, they can sort of predict how things will will go. But so, but in order to like go with that as to like how NI works, you have to buy into the concept of archetypes. And I would say that sort of works because if you compare cultures that have like it's common amongst all humans, again separate populations, some that have maybe not even encountered a snake to not like snakes and spiders. Right. Right. So, and, and and like things to like face uh, to like find a child's face very pleasing, and just like these natural things. Um, I'll ask you a bit about the homeschooling of the kids because that because there's good stuff there in terms of like for like explaining things and the process that you'll use that might be type. Okay. Relevant. Yeah, yeah I but, think so. But talking about the NE thing is like time called the full. Um. And so this thing that's like, thrown it into space with no oxygen. They have 30 seconds to live. How do we rescue them? And so he created this huge, like, uh, I forgot what it's called, cliffhanger. That's it, huge cliffhanger. And it was like, and he was, and every solution he kept come up, came up with for how to rescue them was it was like every solution was just highly improbable. Like, how do I rescue them within time? It's just so improbable. So he's got this in his in his mind. It's in his in weight against yourself, and he then makes the connection, and it goes, "Oh, hang on a minute!" And he perceived the similarity in the situation, and so it's like use the weight of the problem. So he goes from use the weight of the opponent against himself to use the weight of the problem against itself. And the problem he had was the improbability. And so, okay, so how do I use the weight of the improbability against itself? And so mm -hmm. he created the infinite improbability generator, which works on things being highly improbable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It's like... It's just... Now, what John Grinder would say is that can give you a lot of information, a lot of context, and so this is why when you have these people and you probably think that SJs and, and NFPs can, can perform almost the same error of where you're thinking, whoa, you are overgeneralizing way too much. And it's that, and that's what SJs do is it's, but with them, it's, they don't necessarily, they don't create the generalizations, but they sure as heck follow them. Hmm. And so that's why and I call that like the SJNE. So it's like they follow, so it's like once you get into, and so it's like a generalization is a rule, a traditional way of thinking, a stereotypical, whereas like the NPs, they will come up with new ones all the while as they see new connections. That's true. I, I agree with that because it, when I was doing my, my homeschooling, because it was a different kind of homeschooling, there were C types, you know. NPs where it's like from abstract subject to abstract, so, but for them it's like, Oh, my sister, she lives in, uh, uh, oh dear, uh, oh, oh, I've just got to find the name of a place in Texas. She lives in oh. Houston, Texas. And, okay. and it's like, oh, I know somebody there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it, they'll make these connections between the things. They'll do all this, but she bought it in Portugal. And she, like, and it's always like, have you noticed that where it's like, 
top it to top it to top it, but it's like on a I don't know. plan. I, with my mom, I don't know. We just we talk about self pres things, but she. Oh right, like, I see. Uh, the phrase, because it's like we know that NPs create the rules. It, it, by the rule is create the generalization. And then the SJs like to follow it. And that way, if you if you say that the rule following is part of lower level NE, then that opens up a slot. So then you can put Socionics definition of SI in the available SI slot. Because at the because if you use the MBTI function for SI, you can't because mm -hmm. we know that the internal bodily harmony thing, it's part of the truth, that it is it it, it seems <coughs> to be true. But it's like they're both right on SI, but we've got to try and get in both definitions. And I just think that, so for example, ESTJ, I would say they are motivated by you. Right. And so it's so it's like creating the pattern. So that way we can, so like I said, if we stick to the definition of any as finding the structure, finding the patterns, creating a rule across situations mm -hmm. then we can understand why sj is like to do that it's just it's yeah, just that they sense. don't create the rules themselves but they will follow them right and now this then gets to that thing where your isfp is in your istp is using the kersey code is when they get to any break, it's like, well, they don't like to follow the rules and they don't like to like compare one situation to another because it's like, well, that's apples and oranges. Right. And you have to be in the context of the situation that you're working yeah. within. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it wondered, changes. Yeah. And I wondered if, is that a source of frustration to you? Like when you interview us? I, yeah, I'm like, I don't see how it's, that's related. I don't see that that's related. It doesn't, I don't think it's, I don't think they're making a correct comparison right could you give an example seem... i know i'm putting you a little bit on yeah i can't. i'm sorry i can't. i mean yeah uh, let's see don't worry take your time oh i know i got one this is kind of, is this going to be on uh public yeah it's public yeah we're live oh, we're in the crap. top right corner <laughs> we can think of another one i don't mind it's gonna, be, it's gonna be hard because that was like my perfect one. Um, <laughs> I don't want to, to, to get back to. Let's say I was having a conflict with somebody, yep. and so I I went to get better and take in, uh, or at least follow the steps of the counseling I needed to get to a, at least a functional level um, uh, of being able to to live. So um, I went to get on um, uh, Wellbutrin, which is like a, a more dopamine related type of antidepressant and tends to work a lot quicker than SSRIs because my issue is more dopamine related than serotonin. Um, and it, it worked pretty quickly uh, when I said that I was on drugs and that uh, they wouldn't uh, do counseling with me because I was on drugs. Um, and so, uh, and make comparisons to me and, and be a somewhat normal human being. Um, so that was, that was completely different from how I saw it. And I, I used to think that there was things that they would say that I would, I would take the good, I would, I would take pieces of what, so, what can happen there? we get a little bit overconfident in our ability to use any in terms of, and so we become a little bit any ignorance in that we think that, oh, we know what the essential principle is. We don't need to learn the details. But in that exact situation is you do need to know the details because it's in the details that you, you can see that it is apples and oranges when you're talking about a particular drug. And yeah. that's why they will make these like wild generalizations because <clears throat> it's like, Oh, I know the connection. It's just like that. Right. Yeah. So, um, so it's a little different than I think F I S E, you know, yeah. in that situation. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Because, so, for example, that, uh, well, I've talked 
to Jeff quite a bit about this, where it's like, so when I talk about the principles with Jeff, and it's like he will say it depends on the situation, that it's yeah. situational and it's instinctive. Yeah. And that for FINE, it's like more abstracted. And it becomes like a general rule, a general principle to try to stick to. Right. I also think there's some of the SE, like, you kind of have to be able to be free to do what you need to do in the moment. You can't yeah. do that if you've generalized the principle and you kind of already know what you're going to be doing. You have to be able to react to a situation as it happens. You yeah. can't do that as much. How that, right. it, was, it was interesting because th that person ends up looking. It's like as well. I had my own theories about SI. I don't have as many theories about any or NI, but um, with at least with the SE and the SI types, um, I was thinking about the whole bodily sensory yeah. thing. And I have a theory that uh, SI is not the sole realm of internal bodily sensations. And I know that seems, that's sacrilegious in the, in the typology community, but hear me out. Yep. <laughs> um, so, I think that SE types and SI types both are going to be more in touch with their feelings, but I think the way they process those, what are external to they processations, categorize them almost like in a database and be able to recall previous sensations and compare them to present situation, present sensations. And in that way, create like a trend of like a body monitoring system of comparing Current, or current body sensation to what I feel sensations very well. And unfortunately, I think this is because of poor NI, but I tend to go to a trajectory in the future of like a worst case scenario. Like, and I know this sounds kind of six-ish, but also I think NI anxiety can be kind of six-ish sometimes. Whereas like, I'll have a sensation and I kind of can visualize what's going on in my body currently real time, and I see that it's gonna to lead to a lot of problems in the future. I know what problem it's gonna to lead to, and um, I feel like I'm gonna be in this sensation forever. I feel like it's gonna last forever. I don't even know if I'm gonna be whatever, I don't even remember what it's like to be normal again. Um, so HSP also, but I feel my sensations very, very well. And my mom used to think mm. I was a hypochondriac because she couldn't, she didn't seem to, I can feel really, but that's my theory on SI and SE. Um, one thing that um, Carl Jung, he uses the phrase like in, in this one, psychological types. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just a big black book. There we go. <laughs> there, 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 people should see it a bit better. Where it's, um, use the word, it, it's, it's almost as if like, I mean, it's not, objective objective as in what you see is how it really 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 is because an alien might turn up and sure say, every even objective is yeah, still yeah open to but interpretation like, but yeah but, but the idea is that the sense of smell that oh, yeah yeah it's hard I for me too it, actually it, it's hard to concentrate to imagine a smell but so it's like the sensory detail for like say an istj S-I-T-E, folks, is that it's going to be very evocative for them reading just a sensory description, and they just get to wallow in their S-I, I suppose. Yeah, I imagine that would be very good for them. My, my father had a similar sensation when he heard my son play viola and heard a song that transported him back, transported him. Uh, <laughs> you're very kind. Yeah. <laughs> is that we will say that... Um, but as Jeff has said, that like even Adam, if I don't, but can I like try to use? I try to use like Dario's functions for may fit with the Kersey temperaments and things. So, for example, and even if we use the type like SLI, where it was like any suggestion, like, open to the generalization, and it's like. And with ISTJs, did you say your father's, is your father ISTJ or do you know any ISTJs? I think my grandpa was an ISTJ, but he died when I was 17. Ah, well, what, you, what if you know ISTJs well enough, they can have... She, like, she had shaved the side of her head a little bit and like, she 
get you get the impression that you know the way like, if you get eight keys of self leadership, you'll get the impression that Dario Nardi really likes extroverted sensing and FI, which is fair enough given his preference of I, I, INTJ. That's what or, he said. Yeah. Yeah, I get that impression, and he's actually said publicly that like he, he really wants to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's. And I'm thinking about it's like, and he gives the and in the NLP they give the example of learning to drive a car, where it's like, before you learn to drive a car, you have, you are you have unconscious incompetence. You do not know that you're incompetent at driving a car. You right. start to learn to drive a car, and you become conscious of your incompetence. And then as you're able to do it, but it's like you have to concentrate and stuff. You have like, um, conscious competence. And then when it becomes like second nature, you have unconscious competence. Yeah. And so it's always this emphasis on trying to get unconscious competence and doing things naturally. And I suppose you can see how that can sort of work with SE, where you're doing something in the moment, but you're reacting instinctively at an unconscious level. Do you connect with that oh. explanation? <clears throat> I think it's uh, so you can be able to react in the moment. Um, if you yeah. already know how to do it, it doesn't take as much thought and you can react quicker. Yeah. Because, um, you know, well, I guess, and also as you build up that database of, uh, of uh, like NI generalizations or, and make SE and, improvisations. An NI generalization? Yeah. What's that? Is that different from an NA generalization? Or? Like, like an ab ring. And so, um, NLP and uh, Dom dragging a shy NI Dom onto the dance floor to like, and um, but then there's also, uh, and then he even writes in like for the SE chapter, somebody winks at us, let's respond. <laughs> 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 so, but it's also, um, uh, got that. Oh yes. So there's the connection between. So do, do, what we see in terms of behavior is the NJs have this like vision. They're, they're like the good at, good at the plans. So it's like mm -hmm. the NTJs. We know they have their their, their their business plans and their goals. Sure. And the NFJs like have their have their <clears throat> vision to get to that goal. That willpower sometimes or. Um that uh, knowing the steps to take to do it because... Yeah, that's here, yeah. Uh, I... Um, specific oh, that sounds like extroverted sensing in terms of the yeah. behavior. Um, so, it, so, it, so it's like seeing the goal and having the willpower to like achieve the goal and enact the goal. And I, I thought, oh, it sounds like a good idea. Oh, no. Oh yeah, the impulsive is. Uh, I'm definitely hugely impulsive. I asked Matthew Knight that, and he said, um, "What do you, I asked him? What do you think of the word impulsive?" And he says, "It's good if the impulse is to work." <laughs> it's like, really? so, yeah. So, oh no. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Uh, yeah, I don't like work. Um, Let's see. Oh, tactical intelligence. Yeah, I agree with that. And always about freedom. Definitely need freedom. Um, individual, individualistic. I've, I've seen this before where um, I see a bunch of people and they're like all doing the same thing. And um, like, like say, for instance, uh, there's a long line out the women's restroom. <laughs> hmm. And, uh, you know, and I'm like thinking like, well, I'm going to go and investigate for myself if there's even anybody in there and like nine times out of 10, there's an open stall and people are just lining up because that's what everybody else is doing. Weird. Um, so <laughs> like I just kind of blaze my own trail in that, so to speak. Um, and that's not just that, that's just one example, but like in general, uh, I kind of like blaze my own trail. Let's see. It's, his Jeffness, whatever we do. Yeah. That's how I refer to sometimes to Jeff to <laughs> his Jeffness. <laughs> We do the hell out of it. Yeah, well, I want to make an impression. Like, yeah, that was like when you said about when you get into a subject, it reminded me of Jeff when he's talked about, um, uh, oh, like, yeah. you really get into, really go into it in depth. Yeah, but yeah, I mean. It reminded me into something else, like, the, 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 this, like, change, whereas the SJs expect, like, Jeff to be the baseball guy forever. 
<laughs> whereas it just might change an interest to something else. Right. I did. Yeah, that's what I do. Like I had aquariums and I've done beer making and I've done things like that. Let's see. I will not be scheduled. That's how I feel because I, I bought a planner because I, I long to have that stuff. I like to be put together yeah. and, and have the idea of being like that. But then when I get into it, I feel like I'm in prison. It literally right. feels like a prison and nice. I can't live my life according to what's on a piece of paper. I have to be able to adjust to it how I want to do it, you know? Do you think part of your, like, part of the, like, anxiety you felt in the past, like, say, within you, I would say that, like, th this is just a theory that's coming out, like, you've got a tension within you between being self prayers and then and side. And I'm sorry, Where, I didn't, like, that, that move the mic away, but, like, a tension within you between, like, the artisan side that wants mm -hmm. freedom and doesn't really want to be scheduled, but then you've got this self- A self prez side? Oh my God, I don't even know how <laughs> I would be. Holy crap, I would be horrible. Like, that's the only thing, I, that's the only reason I probably have a house. Um, I'm just barely hanging on and it's only because of self prez <laughs> You know, it's like, uh, I, I don't even feel like a grown up, really. I still feel like I'm still a kid, you know? I don't want to do the whole responsible thing. But then the self press comes in and it's like, you got to do the responsible thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, self press has saved me. Uh, let's see, tangible action. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, what Dario, Dario said is correct. Take yeah. tangible action. I do need it to be tangible because when I, when I, at work, if I don't see like I'm actually doing something, it's a lot harder to feel the motivation to do it. Right. Um, they learn. Okay, so this is the part that I didn't know if really it fits me really a whole lot is to learn best experientially. And when they see that, okay, so I, I need to see the relevance of what I'm learning. Yeah. But the experientially part, like, I was pretty good at imagining things in my head. Yeah. So like when I would read my applied science theory books, I could see how it would work in my head. I didn't need yeah. to. Uh, I didn't need a, a laboratory demonstration and I didn't really care to, to do anything because I don't like doing things. I, I think just that would be, <laughs> I think that maybe because like what, what we've learned from socionics is like, what we could do is if we, we could, even though it's LSI, but what we could do is plug like the, the American definitions of the functions into the model G of the LSI and end up with an ISTP and we can mm -hmm. end up with a type that will still where you can have like an ISTP, a Kersey ISTP that can act like an INTJ in certain situations, like in getting, you know that, because you've got that loop of NI and TI. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that might have been a situation where you get into that, like an INTJ loop. Yeah, I think so. I think because I, when I first tested in college, uh, when I was 23 and I was finishing up my degree or 22, something like that. I was finishing up my degree and I tested INTJ with the official mm -hmm. test. And I'm not an INTJ. There's like, there's no way. But I was in that mode yeah. of INTJing, <laughs> you yeah. know, because it fit really well for the laboratory. Um, yep. Let's see. I'm definitely concrete in word usage. I think anybody that's been around me long enough on the forums and talked to me can pretty much testify to the fact that I'm pretty concrete in my word usage. Very utilitarian. I'm very pragmatic. Um, yeah, the best tool for the job. And I love getting tools. I love I love accumulating tools, um, approved or not. So yeah, I'll use whatever has to be used to get the job done. Right. So yep, I agree with all that. Right then. So uh, now, but you see, the thing is, folks, in socionics, this is also compatible with SLI. Yeah. Which is a little bit because SLI is a little bit like, especially the SLI in Model G is a little bit like. ISTP in um, Kersey. So, okay. uh, what have we got? Uh, what was I going to show? Oh, yes. I'll, I can show you. I've done that. And then I can show you the. Oh, yeah. Some NLP concepts that are relevant to uh, NI. <clears throat> Could we pause uh, for just a second? Yep. Background noise. Right. When she comes back, she'll switch her. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll turn her mic down in case there's any background activity. Right, so you see how good I am? Right, so what I'll do is um, 
I'll, I'll talk about it. In fact, what I can do is, while we're actually waiting for Farah to come back, is I'll actually show the Model G of um, SLI. And so we can go over these uh, little differences. I'll try and show up. I'll show you SLI. Now, I actually think if you put the Dario definitions in here, then you actually get a type that looks like ISCJ. What we've got here is this. That's LSI. I need SI. So that's quite different. So FAR is going to be a little bit more like, in my opinion, SLI. SLI is not like, here we go. I'll give you time to look at that. I'll just zoom it in, in case you're on a mobile device. I've got the scalable vector graphics. Farrell will know what it is, being a computer person. Right. You know, I, I, suppose, I suppose it's a little bit different here with what I've written about my mother. I don't think she would fit this there but you see one of the problems i have with it being like this is maybe with the intertype relations is i don't necessarily think it fits because when you put say if you're saying that siti is istp well is it you see the thing is the people who are istp in the Kersey system is they tend to have like beta st romance style so it's almost like the romance style is not the romance style of the delta quadra and it's the same with like lsi and it's like when you look at the lsi description it reads like well just like an introverted estj so it's almost like it appears to be in the wrong quadra and it's written like that because of its because it's written deductively from the functions. So for instance, here they don't trust any complex work methods to achieve their results. So that's why I've got it in red, because it's like that doesn't sound like uh Kersey ISD Joe. Right. Oh, gone wrong again. I'll uh, oh, put like that TV. so you can see all of it. You know? And I'll be a that, little that... bit quiet. I wonder when she... All right, actually, I'll, I'll just go over here. I'll I'll make it big for you. Ben, and then I'll put me? the other square on. And you can look at that. Because I don't show these a lot. Hello? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, we're back. I don't know how long you were there oh. for. Oh, I, was, well, I, was, I didn't know if you could hear me or not. I was, I was just going to say that your stuff in red. What is this sociotics nonsense? Right. So I, I, I like to like show it in Hangouts, mm -hmm. but not show it around, like in open, but because in Hangouts, I can then explain why it's the way it is. Right. Uh, so for example here, like, like I said, that stuff in, oh, that stuff in red. Right there. Yeah. If it, to see if it fits you. Um, I tell you what, number number eight on the SI plus yeah, definitely fit. fits me. <laughs> <laughs> well, number we eight fits me. Number three fits me. <laughs> yeah, but what I was what I was sort of saying there before, I don't know if you were there at the time, is like I don't know if the like say the romance styles fit. Mm, I don't know. I, I looked at those and I, uh, yeah, you could. Um, I, I don't know. Um, well, because it's, they seem like they're different types and according to MBTI. So like, the L yeah. you know, like the, what is it? L LSI is beta. Yeah, that's the thing is like, it's, it's like, <clears throat> I've, 
I, I talked to, I've talked to a female INTP about this, and it's like there's definitely a, a beta quadra style of like like romance style, which like is aggressiveness like, aggressive. Aggressive. Say that they are SLI, but the romance style doesn't fit at all yeah. because you put an and because <laughs> you're saying that they're at home with the NFPs. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. Oh, would. Whereas, right. but if you use Dario's definitions of the functions, then you can get into a place that's completely, it matches up nice. And it's only the sensory introverts, folks, that don't match up. And even SCI. And it's almost like there is no ISFP in Socionics because it's like there's two ISFJs, like ESI's like ISFJ. And like SEI I is ISFJ as well. It's like two versions of them. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, when I was reading the ESI descriptions, I found some parts that sounded ISFP and some parts that sounded ISFJ. Yeah. Uh, so it was odd. And, and, and same thing with the SEI. Parts of it fit. And then there were some, some aspects that were a little bit SJ-ish. So those really don't fit. Yeah, because um, it's, it's like... Be Part of it is like because they're not going from temperament, like, and there's like I said, you've got Kersey or influenced. Now, I don't know how much of this is true, but I believe his son, when his son said in an interview with NF Geeks that his son, at, that it was Kersey Senior that fleshed out and wrote the proper MBTI profiles because originally he said that they were just like a couple of paragraphs each, and it was oh. his father that fleshed them out. Hmm. the uh the mbti profiles because like his father oh. was a proper psychologist like he was working for 30 years <laughs> dealing with like unruly school boys and teaching therapists of dysfunctional behavior for 30 years before he then wrote please understand me and then when please understand me too came out 50 years of experience of working with people and like having this type yeah. theory there I know, and, and when I revert back to Kiersey, I know where I, I know what type I fit. So it's it's kind of nice in that respect. Oh, like I, I don't. Oh, what type do you fit in Kiersey then? Uh, well, I'm definitely artisan because we're yeah. going by temperaments. Yeah. Um, and probably the ISFP is the closest. Um, and I am like a uh, artisan um, rational blend. Um, you know, if we because we're all like blends of temperaments. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I feel like I'm definitely like in that um, ISFP, INTP blend of, um, that's, how, that's how I kind of feel anyways. But I think I just wanted to be a little NT child when I, I was growing up and I kind of like honed that a little bit. Yeah, that can work with, um, with, um... Because it's like if you take Model G and put Dario's functions in it, it works mm -hmm. really, really well. Yeah, because I, I wouldn't, I'm definitely not, I'm not the aggressor, whatever. Yeah. I've, I've read that before and I was like, there is no way I'm that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but with SE, you would think, but uh, STPs are different than SFPs, you know? Um, yeah. That's why it was unfortunate. That, I mean, because you, you went to the Enneagram thing and, I, and, I, and, I, and, you, and I hopefully you enjoyed it because you weren't able to like come to the, like maybe you can come for like subsequent hangouts where we go through the SE chapter in Dario's book where, there were little bits in there where he touched on things that sounded a little bit like aggression, like take action and make your presence felt and all these kind well, of like things. I do have that in me. I mean, I can come off kind of intimidating, but I don't, that's not how I generally like to be. I don't want to be seen as that kind of person. Right. Um, but yeah, the Enneagram thing was great. I just, I missed, I'm sorry. I missed that. Cause I really would have loved to, uh, oh. I really would have loved to have heard that. Well, you can watch it on uh, it, I know, but it's, it's questions as someone who's not an SE lead. Yeah, so, yeah. Know, probably a little bit more toned down. Yeah, well, I mean, compared to my, uh, my, my biological father's at e that, 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 that sounds uh, nicer than the way I would have phrased <laughs> it. They have a crush on uh, NI. Uh, so there's, there's four concepts where they talk about being, there's one called being in time. And where, so it's like you're really in the present moment. Mm -hmm. You're right in the moment. So it's like, okay, that, okay, Ben, you're telling me how to suck an egg. That's being an, being an SP in time. 
And, then, and if you contrast this with through time, this is like the, the NJ is NI Max types. And it's like, they're not really present. <laughs> it's like the flow of time, like things flowing into the future, into the past. And it's like, so it's a little bit like the NI. And then we've got another, another, another way of looking at NI and SE is up time is like directing all of your senses outwards. Again, like SE and downtime is like, like going into a little bit of a trance and your focus of attention going inwards. Oh, and so yeah. you can see how NI types can do both the downtime thing where they go into a little trance and they like go into a little daydream. And so the NI types are downtime and through time. And the SPs are in time and up time. Yeah, I, I, that, I feel like I go back and forth between those two things also. Yeah. Because sometimes I'm really in the moment and I, I'm like right here with you and I'm, I'm taking everything in. And sometimes like I'm looking, I'm not even looking at what seen through it almost well, that that might be a thing of like extroversion introversion and especially if we um define that as like extroverted outer focused objective and introverted subjective inner focus where mm -hmm. you're going to have more of that propensity to go towards ni than uh the extroverted sps and this matches up with the functions that way. You've got it right there, big tertiary NI. Yeah, uh, I mean, ISFP I, I feel like slash ISTP. I probably, I probably done that a little too much and not, not been in my extroverted as, as much as I should have been. Yeah. Right. The reason why I got him to homeschool was because of my ex uh, giving me this idea uh, of homeschooling, and for some reason it's just like I didn't even think of it. And uh, but then when she said it, I really. I really embraced it and I saw how it could be good for the kids. I saw how it could be used. Um, and the style at first, um, so there was a compromise that I ended up making in my head of things that I felt like they had to learn uh, in addition to things that they also wanted to learn. Um, the problem was when I started doing that, I, I don't know how to create structure and I, I don't even have structure for myself. I, I don't do anything pretty much the same time of day. Um, so it's very chaotic and it's very hard for, not only hard for, for me to, uh, to do homeschooling, but it was also very hard for the children because children thrive on structure uh, to a certain degree, at least some loose structure. And I a lot and um, my son, uh, he pretty much studied on his own. I didn't do a lot of interaction. Um, and then with my daughter, um, she didn't quite like it as much. She needed even more structure. My daughter is an SJ. Um, and so she didn't really thrive on, and she's an ESFJ. So she really, yeah, he wanted, so my son, he's a, I think he's an ISFP or an NTJ. It's really hard for him because he's kind of like me in that respect uh, growing up. So I still haven't nailed that down, but he did okay on his own and did fun things creatively with the kids. But um, I just don't think I'm the right kind of parent to do that kind of stuff. I think I'm more fun parent. And I think, um, I think certain types that have more structure would have been better because I, I kind of sucked at it. So. I feel like a personal failing at that. But I would I would say that because school and back into it, she can she wrote amazing stories. She creatively was I, I don't know if it's her tertiary any or what, but her stories, man, she was just like awesome with writing. Um, so they really didn't people the teachers teaching subjects that they're not like. So for instance, in England. When I, when I was at school, it's like the teachers had a three-year degree in the subject they were teaching. And this is like a three-year degree where it's only that subject. Wow. So if you had like a maths teacher, they would have studied maths and it would have been only maths, no other subjects. Wow. At all. 
Yeah, it's not and, like that at all. <laughs> and, and then they would have done another degree after. Yeah, I, I, because, um, but when it came to math, I wasn't as good. I forgot most of what I'd learned in school. And when it came to English, I didn't even like English class to begin with in high school, let alone teach it to my kids and then edit their stuff. I'm not good at that, you know? Like, I, I don't know, it just doesn't interest me as much. So it was, it was definitely hard. Um, I don't know, I just, I felt like somebody else could have done a better job that, that has more, um, had more of their stuff together, you know? I think with English is like, if you could find like an author that you find particularly funny, that- Yeah, <clears throat> my son, he, he just would come out with like 50 books from the library. We literally had a <laughs> tote. We would go to the library and he would just like, he picked out so many books, I had to get a cart with wheels to be able to right. get them out. Well, I mean, I mean, he's one of these people that could teach themselves. Like, yeah, so it's could, like- yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, but the thing is, I didn't want to put a limitation on what they teach themselves. Like, yeah, so it's could, like, yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, but the thing is, I didn't want to put a limitation on what they Tim Hunkin, Tim Hunkin, and like the Royal Institution Christmas Lectures, you'd like them as well as like a practical science person. Like, they oh. go back like decades. And uh, in fact, David Kersey Jr. has watched some of them. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, the uh, Royal Institution Christmas Lectures. And um... yeah, I was watching like, was it, we were watching um, these uh, guys build log cabins today out of old reclaimed barn wood. Huh. That's kind of, uh, that was kind of like my educational videos I like to watch when I was a kid. That and like uh, stuff about zoology, but he's, he's less about medical stuff and he's more into um, like math. He's like really big. He is, he is. Uh... So far, the, this is this, the, 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 the next question. And you'll be able to work out the fourth one when I ask you what the third one is. So the third inquiry is, please tell us about your strengths. Oh, yeah, I, I can figure out what that is. Your strengths. Oh, yeah, I, I can figure out what that last one is. <laughs> in the microwave. Okay, I'll hold you over. Okay, sorry about that. Um. I met somebody yesterday and like when I look in their eyes, their eyes are so beautiful. You know, I can just, I see, I just see beautiful things in everybody. I can find something positive that I like about somebody very easily. I can see the beauty in things. Um, like actions people take towards one another, altruism, um, people coming together for causes, uh, people helping one another, life forces helping of life um, pretty well, especially in the areas that I know. Um, oh, uh, another one of my strengths is um, very accepting of people's differences. Um, I I like to allow for people to show up to the world how they want to be. I don't feel like I can want to be. God, I see. I can say Zavolchi uh, Kazul month, um, and that was it. But like by the end of the month, I could, I could speak enough Russian. Um, Oh yeah. yeah, did you do, did you do the did you do the thing that um there's something that um John Grinder mentioned. He is at ISTP where he talked about if you're learning the language, it's best not to mentally convert. It, like you want to try to stay within the new language that you're learning, and like if you make a mistake with somebody, it's best to ask them like for an explanation of it within the actual language like sort of did you do that but did you just like try to stay within russian yeah i, I mean well even yeah, internally I, I i took on the role um i guess maybe i don't i don't remember going back and forth a whole lot between the language um i did try to stay within uh 
the language and my host family didn't speak English. Mm. So it made it very easy to, if I needed to be able to communicate, um, I had to be able to meet them at their level and right. use the tools of language to, to communicate with them and to connect with them. And we connected so much that, you know, we were like, they felt like I was their daughter by the time I left. And I felt like they were wow. my parents. It was like, they were wonderful people, you know? So I think, I don't, I don't know. They wanted me to come back and like teach Russian. I, I learned it so good. And I was just like, there is no way I'm doing that ever. Like, <laughs> it's, like it's too nerve wracking and I don't want to be put on the spot. And uh, I don't, first off, I don't, I didn't feel like I was an expert, but I did, I learned it really well out of all the kids that went. So, but um, as well, far you, as could my, be, you could be in the next, I think I've invited you to previous ones. You could be in the next Victor hangout and like be the back in, in case we lose connection because it well, might so, be maria unless he says i can speak russian and shut up goat there's really not much else that i can understand that he's going to say probably so those are the only two phrases that i can remember from high school <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh i actually remember more of my high school spanish class than i remember the russian but um I, as far as my other strengths just like troubleshoot adaptable like uh, when I did the strengths finder test, that was my number one trait. Um, and just seeing the good in people, seeing the good in life, that kind of thing. That's those are my strengths, I think. Right, okay, so you can work out what's next. Weakness. Weaknesses. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I don't know where to start. It's like. <laughs> uh, Oh, I'm too sensitive. So even though it's a strength sometimes, it's definitely a weakness. That was definitely apparent yesterday. Um, Cause then I can't function. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think the sensitivity has probably led me to not do things in my career or take risks that I otherwise would have or show up and be present in situations because it's too much for me. So I try not to get to that point because I don't like the way it makes me feel. Um, and I don't like feeling embarrassed and shamed and stuff. Uh, let's see. Um, well, I don't know. There's so many things that I could touch on, really. Oh, impulsivity is another weakness. I can't moderate myself very well. Um, Apparently, but you did also connect with like when it said artisans, they're impulsive and like being that way. I do, I like being that way, but it's definitely hurt me. Ah, right, like, I see. There's reasons why my bank account is not, you know, like as big as it could be, <laughs> you know? I'm impulsive financially, I'm impulsive with what makes me feel good. Um, and I, I have to watch it, you know, I have to be careful because if I do everything that I want to because it makes me feel good, then I end up down a road of no moderation and not living or living life for the present and not considering the consequences. And so oftentimes I will consider the consequences, but they just don't matter as much as the present. So it ends up hurting me. Um, so yeah, so there's the impulsivity. Oh, laziness. Oh God, I'm so lazy. There's, I hate it. I, I just, I conserve energy a lot. And um, I like to do what I want to do. And it may not be what I need to do. So like, there's laundry I got to do. I need to go to the store today. I haven't done it. I and I feel like I need to make a meal plans because I usually just go to the store and buy what I want and buy what I want. And then I just I don't have like the groceries that I need to make actual meals. So when I get home, I just have to like throw things together. Well, how, how old is your um, ESFJ daughter? Because like you, she might reach a point soon where you can delegate a lot of that to her and she would gladly do it. She made me a list today. <laughs> yeah, she's 10. She made me a list. I have it right here on my phone. She sent it to me and typed it up. Um, <laughs> she's, she's great about that. Um, I've been using Alexa, so I just, when I, I speak it into my, my Alexa yeah. app, what I'm missing, and then it puts it a list on my phone, so I don't have to worry about it.
I think those are my my major weaknesses. Um, and they do sound quite a bit like Enneagram Nine traits. They are like, yeah, yeah. Because I I mean like, I I'll sit around the house all day long, kind of. But if somebody calls me up and's like, "Hey, you want to go do something?" I'm like, "Yeah, let's go do it." You know. But I need to have, <laughs> I need to have somebody help me. You know. Like I I just don't know what to do. I just. Great. These are one on that list. Myself, um, I'm very, very disorganized. I got papers all over the place, and I just I feel overwhelmed with all the information that's thrown at me, and I don't even know what to do. Like, I just want clear direction on just totally. I have so many weaknesses, Ben, and it's just like, I don't know, uh, I'm too relevant, shy. Rele relevant weaknesses, relevant. Okay. Um, I, I feel like I, I am so inhibited. I can't be myself in most situations. Um, uh, I, I don't know if that's relevant or not, but like, I do feel like I've falsified my type. I feel like, and I don't know if it's because of the extra sensitivity, because this also, like I said, was a positive, but also a weakness. I don't even know how to like fully be myself because I just kind of blend in with whatever situation I am. To an extent, I'm never truly myself unless I'm alone. Right. Ooh. Well, what I, what we can do now is we can sort of like. So. Are we using um? What definition are we using? Oh, if we like, use the the, Darius, the, sort of like the common definition, the pretty. I think that. That's exactly what I can do because I, I know like I used to I used to think that I could like telepathically read animals minds and know how they feel and know what they wanted because I could I could become them almost like I know from how I would feel in terms of value, I realize well I must really value one way or the other um, you know like I didn't realize how I felt I do have values. I just don't often. I'm not able to articulate. Not able to articulate. I think people should be kind to one another. You should be accepting of people. But I sometimes. Yeah, it's tricky sometimes to like distinguish between those two. Um, if we, if, yeah, because. The way FI can be in SP is, is exactly like that. It's situational, whereas with the NFPs, they abstract it into these universal principles that's like part of their self-image. Yeah. I saw that. I did see that especially because also oh, yes. I... they take bits and pieces from like other types and maybe bits and aspects from people around them. Yeah. It's really weird. Like, I mean, I remember doing this when I was a kid, like seeing something that I liked in somebody and taking it into myself and doing it myself because I liked it. Um, and it's very. Nine that's an INFJ. And uh, oh, okay. I'm using the crazy code here, folks, because because there's probably not be some socionics people. Right. I always use the. The. The MBTI Kersey codes because it's like it, it includes more people. The, the right. most of the viewers use, and I learned that code first. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, it's it's. I guess it's more ingrained because of that. Um, but yeah, so I think there is an overlap there, but there is a distinct thing of nine where it's more, it's different. There is a difference. I just don't. I'm not able to articulate it. Yeah, it um, just seems to be a bit weird where to have like. Although, although. Although, and this contradicts my theory, and I will admit this, that it does contradict my theory. We do know that Imogen Sky, and we will say that she's like, we're pretty sure she's an ISFP, mm -hmm. at least in Kersey temperament theory. And she is at home as a nine. And so there you've got an FI lead who's also a nine. So that does. She's, I, I think she's probably more likely to voice her values than I am. I've noticed that in conversations. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not quite as likely. Um, because I'm scared what's going to happen, the repercussions, and that could be my six coming in. I don't know. Um, 
but I, I did notice that uh, sometimes I'll make a decision and I don't realize it affects my values because I of the nine probably. So I accommodate and then slowly over time, I realize I have some resentment growing. This resentment coming from. Um, and then I realized that I must have internally known and felt like I was going against my values and I didn't, I did not act on it. And so this growing cognitive dissonance starts to eat at me. And eventually I have to speak my mind. I have to get, I have to say it. I have to put it right. Um, and then yeah. it looks like I went back on my word. I'm wishy-washy yep. and I'm flaky. Yep. What I understand about, I think I'm more TI because I like to understand how something works. And I like to know the ins and outs of it because because then you can, if, I don't know, it's really hard for me to sometimes just to uh, fully understand something and I want to fully understand it. Right. And I don't know if that's also NI at work too, but um, I want to fully be able to like take it in. Right, okay. So if you really want to take stuff in, so I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call you on this because you've just said that, I'm gonna say, I have, I've done a video with Haley where we went through the TE chapter, or the yeah. TE section, and, in Carl Jung's psychological type, you really go into like the difference between like TE and TI. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you think of like TE as like, it's your objective thinking. And so it's all about like trying to measure, measure stuff. And it's like really empirical. Oh, I like and empirical you, stuff though too. Yeah. And, and your TI <laughs> is a bit, TI is a little bit more philosophical where it's like you start with a premise and, yeah. you do it and you get all the logical like suppositions so it's like you get you see it with victor where his models are all internally consistent and they're based on certain premises and functions it's rather than going well, I guess, from an observation i guess i love it like there's nothing better for me than taking a test and seeing <laughs> a result i'm like when I got pregnant, I took like 50 pregnancy tests and I lined up all, I mean, every day I do like an analysis of how yeah. dark the line is just to see measurement. Like MBTI, like, do you have like a crush on TE? I don't know. Or, or, like, or is that part of the science background? I think it's the science because the ENTJs kind of scare me, to be honest. <laughs> um, and it's not because they're bad people. It's just they they can be a little more blunt and harsh. Mm. You know, they're very direct. And I kind of need somebody that's a little bit more uh, sensitive. <laughs> so, <laughs> ENTP. I love. Uh, maybe it's partly because they're sevens, and I love Enneagram sevens. Right. Um, it's hard to know, but and I, I love ESFPs too. But. but mm. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, because that's the thing. Because it's like I remember when I did like by my biology degree, I did applied biology, where it's like it's like even though you have like a TI preference, you learn. Like, Look, Cole Popper had some. He wrote some good, good stuff. He had a good scientific method there. Of, like you try to disprove a theory. You don't try to like cook the books and come up with experiments to like prove a theory. You I just I like prove a theory. I like coming up with explanations. Oh. Um, but yeah, I don't know like if I follow the scientific method perfectly or anything, but um, uh, cause I don't like having to follow a structure. So yeah. I guess in that aspect, I just, I, I, I used to just come up with explanations for things and people would tell me that that was TI that I was using when I, when I would say things like that. So I don't know. Well, if you if you if you fit more the pattern of ISFP, they do have good access to TI, and especially if it's in the scientific realm, it's like it gets trained up. And as you know, it's one of these things my, you train the brain, you get better at it. My brain pattern showed that. I mean, it was like the TI areas of my brain that were lighting up, right? So. Um, I mean, that's where I at least put more emphasis. It doesn't mean I'm great at it, but at least yeah. that's where I, my brain tended to go. Oh yeah. And it, do you want to tell the audience like what Dario said? It was like, 
in your in conclusion? But... Well, he said that the short term preferences, the one where I was putting the most of my energy was in um, ISTP like regions. So yeah. and uh, pattern P types, because the STP types, he said, didn't even show anything as far as starburst. And he was, you know, it's it's probably likely that your your intuition is tertiary and is showing up like this. Yeah, that's it worked for me. You know, it's worked for me for my career. It's worked for me for my education. Um, and, and the result, right? Uh, or is it to do because of type? I hope he he takes those college kids that he did and in his initial pilot study and does them again uh, yeah. years later. I would be really interested to see. Uh, what their brains look like then, you know, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, right. yeah so it's like, it's a, it becomes, it still comes down to it, right? It's like you're some hybrid between like ISF, yeah. ISTP and, but mm -hmm. I would think that, especially if you look at what you were like when you were younger, if you did have those like ISFP preferences and like they said the reason why you wanted to get into science like you wanted to please your parents and these things it do tend to be like feelingy type things uh, and the fact that I was ashamed uh, my, my grandma used to like laugh because she could make me cry so easily so she would like sh try to like act what like I did type something was she? ESTP I type her as an ESFP um, but she had a lot of abuse as a child right, growing okay. up and alcoholism and stuff. So yeah, there's a lot of dysfunction there. Right. Um, not doing the best. I was like, if they give you the theory, if they give you, they, they give you like well worked out reasoning, that seems logical or if they give you the facts and the bottom line well it's hard i don't i'm not really sure um do you have any like examples yeah see i thought you might ask for that as, <laughs> but uh, it's hard to say but like maybe like in a scientific like there might be like a, an entp there that comes out with a theory that like it sounds really good and it's all consistent and internally logical and stuff but then there's also like this is what the data is and mm -hmm. maybe if you had like a, conf a fl conflicting situation where say there was like a scientific where it was like you were expecting a certain result because of a theory pointed in this direction but then the result came out as I would take my theories I would think my theory is wrong and I would make a new theory to explain the results that I had. Right. Whereas right. the, um, I think a more of a TI person might be more reluctant to like throw the theory away and they might think, Oh, is the machine working right? <laughs> Can I trust this data? <laughs> well, there's that too, I guess, because of my training. Um, yeah. you know, I do have like, Oh, is the, is the machine even coming up with the right answer? Yeah. Because I, I actually, okay, maybe this might explain it and maybe you can yeah. tell me if it's TE or TI, Yeah. but I was working as a lab tech and I got some results um, that were really weird. And I kept coming up with them. It, it couldn't register the results of this lady. And we were trying to do a hemoglobin A1C level on her, which is for diabetes. And it's getting, the level that's coming up with is below detectable levels, which for a diabetic, you're not expecting below detectable levels of a hemoglobin A1C. It couldn't, the machine was so low, it couldn't even read it or give me a number. So I'm thinking, what's wrong with this lady? What's, what's going on with her? Why is it something with the machine? Is it something with her blood sample? Could it be contaminated? And then I started looking at her diagnosis. And the reason why she was in the ER at the time was um, she was having sickle cell crisis. And uh, I actually had remember seeing this patient many times before because I was I seen her get blood and they do CBCs on her because she's always losing blood. The is that the glycosylation of the glucose into the cell wall of the red blood cell is 
basically something that's built up over time and intravascular hemolysis. And so when you have intravascular hemolysis, that means that you have a newer population of red cells because your body's continuously trying to keep up the population. They don't have this because I had to call the ER and tell them that, yes, she's a diabetic, but we can't give you the results of a hemoglobin A1C on a patient's blood that is not even, first off, that they're-, they're It's they're, bad blood. That, yeah, we can't do it because she her red cell population is is very young because she's always having to make new. And also it might not even be her blood. So this is like, it's basically futile to measure the hemoglobin A1C level of somebody that's not even their blood. So just stick with the glucose level and just have to be done with it. So that's, and then, so then I taught like that to my coworkers cause they couldn't understand like why they were getting that result on her too. And nobody, nobody realized it, but it was only because I was going to school at the time. The theory is fresh in my head. Um, I was able to take that and understand why the results were, re were reflecting that answer. And then I, I dispersed it so everybody would know and the ER doctors would know that, that even though she's a diabetic, you're not gonna be getting good results on her. Right. And experience yeah. and procedure and things like that. Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, I know I like facts. I know I like results. I mm. like measuring, so. But that also might be like just a sensing thing. This is yeah, getting tricky. I don't know. Well, I do also like with the global warming thing. Yeah, go on. I mean, you can look at the icebergs. Like, I don't want to look too deep into the theory because it doesn't interest me that whole lot. But, and I know that sounds very horrible and I'm sure very ignorant, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it's good enough for me that like the ice is melting and I'm not, not going to look too much more. It's, it's the same strong. because it's just because the ice expanded like one tenth. And so you got like one tenth of the ice above the water. But like when it melts, it shrinks down again. So like when they think, so when they talk about sea levels rising because of ice melting, well, that must be ice that's on land or like say Antarctica or like glaciers and things. Because oh. if it's actual ice in the ocean, it's not going to rise because it will shrink. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's one example, uh, you know, I have of that. Um, I, I don't know if that's... Uh... Although they would say... But Ben, that's a good theory, but you tell that to the people in the Pacific where who's lost their land in those. Right. So oh. it's like, so the measurement thing, so something's going on there. So right. with those islands that are now much, much smaller in the Pacific. Right, right. So there's some, maybe something that's not accounted for, I would think. Um, the other, other one was a flat earth, a flat earth theory. <laughs> And that's one that's, I, 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 can't, I don't know, I can't even take it seriously because... No, you can't! That's ridiculous! Because you don't make to the perceiving functions, this is where we will be able to see, like, the preferences. Uh, okay. So it's like, um, if we compare SE versus SI, uh, what do you prefer? Man, but here, this this really depends on how you're defining the functions. Yeah. Because if if you go like by the like American school, like Dario Nardi, the definition of SE is like improvising, immersing yourself in the present context. You may, you might be like, yeah, Ben, I'm on that team. And SI, oh, that's boring, following the rules. But then if we say, oh, SE is about oh aggression, and SI is about being nice and yeah. cool, well, then you might be go, oh, team SI. Yeah, so, I love comfort. Heck yeah, that's like that's great. So, what about that then? SC versus SI. Okay, so if we're using Dario's definition, um, and like definitions I've seen elsewhere, like MBTI related, I I agree with SE um, because I am very more present oriented and opportunity oriented and taking action in the real world. And I feel like my outer environment is malleable. I can make change in it. Um, uh, I noticed the difference with the NFP and me. It's like, I, I felt like there I could change things.
slightly in the future. Like introverts, like trying to tell the difference where it's like for the for, um, for the SJs, because the SJs, they're like internally dynamic and their behavior is like structured and like static. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's almost as if like their mood can get affected by external chaos and disorder. So it's like when you said it's like, so if they're in a room, like the wallpaper, if it's not quite to their liking, it might like get on their nerves. Like everything has to be perfect in order mm. to like calm their inside. And whereas with you, do you, are you more, do you think that your external surroundings are less important? As long as like everything's okay from a self pres point of view, but internally you're okay or maybe yeah, other I've, things internally affect you. Well, I'll tell you, like when I, um, if my mom were to come in my house, I definitely go based off of mood though, like how I feel about things. If it makes me feel um, mm. that, that changes it. I like, I notice I walk into my mom's house and I just feel great. Like I am and it's wonderful. And, um, and I, I don't think it's as much about the external surroundings as it is about the people that have made that house a home. Right. Yeah, that's me. Cause like, it's still the highly sensitive person, but it's like to the emotional atmosphere, not the physical state of things not the coordination of the wallpaper or certain colors not as much no yeah it's not nerves. as much about that yeah yeah because i mean i've always been a huge mess my i mean it's got on my mom's nerves all my life um but yeah or was friendly and i liked him and um it just felt right right uh so if we use I think we talked about the. Did we talk about what the so, this, a little bit of SI in there, like the socionics version of SI, like comfort and things. I love comfort. It's like, yeah, it's like one of those things, like where it, even in like. Well, I don't want to do anything that's gonna like affect my body. I'm really like, mm. afraid of like, like standing too long hurts my. Um, and I know that's doing harm. In clashes. Uh, I felt like I used NI and I felt like my ex used NE mm. and there was this whole like multiple scenario thing where I just kind of like wanted to perceived as closed minded at times. So because of this, I had the Now, well, I think we could conclude with, um, like um there's a way to try to try to nail down your type would maybe it's like think about um intertype relations where so for example theory e even though i mean i i think that if you look if you look at like if we just look think of the cursey codes think of the mbti codes generally the stps don't get on great with the nfps do you think that's mm -hmm. fair to say? Yeah, no, I think that's very fair to say. So do you think that your interaction with NFP is like an STP there, or was that not so much like that? No, I didn't feel like, I really didn't feel like that, because I don't think this person would have been with anybody that was insensitive. Right, okay. Um, uh, there was almost like, yeah, I don't think she's ever been with anybody that's been a thinker. Right. Not because that they're not all thinkers are insensitive, but because um, I think that well, I don't know how to I don't know how to word it that's not offensive because I don't want to be offensive to you and okay. say that all okay. thinkers are insensitive. I think insensitive and less sensitive about feelings, and I think um, maybe that ha that does change with maturity and maybe with enneagram type, but. Um, I don't all, all the same. Is not because you know it's got little bits of both, a little bit of ISFP, a little bit of ISFJ in right. there. You'd have to like think, but it's like I, I don't know how accurate it is. 
Well, I've, if I've read the descriptions, I always relate to the SEI and the SLI, probably SEI more. And I think my ex, when she read the SEI, she also said that she saw me more in the SEI. Um, but I think outwardly, uh, I think I'm more SLI when I present outwardly yeah. until you talk, talk to me more. Like that, but you see how it's like it's in there because it's TI plus, and TI plus is about following the rules. So it's like it's written deductively. So you end up with a oh. profile where I call it the functional tail wagging the whole type dog. Right. So. Sure, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Oh. There's no need to write that bit up when <laughs> when you write it up a bit or oh, I edit that bit out. So. Sure. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> right. So that, I think that's enough going through the um, like open questions. Let's like try to get your type out there and you'll try and work out your type. You'll, you'll probably some, be some kind of sensory introvert, but you already know that. <laughs> what, what do you think? Are, do you think SEI or SLI? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I personally think, well, I have, like I said, I have a problem with the way socionics defines the sensory introverts. So I just think, okay, some kind of introverted artisan and somewhere between ISFP, ISDP, and I would lean towards ISFP. That's exactly what I was, yeah, that one lady said uh, a couple of days ago. Yeah. In conjunction with the Enneagram hangout and get more context. Yeah, that'd be All interesting. Right, Thanks for doing this. I appreciate All it. Right.